explain what's going on here. You know, a lot of people have heard that Donald Trump has this hidden advantage when it comes to the Electoral College. How so? Harry, thank you for helping me explain what's going on here. You know, a lot of people have heard that Donald Trump has this hidden advantage when it comes to the Electoral College. How so? Yeah, so, you know, let's take a look back at what happened in 2016, right? What did we see? We saw that Hillary Clinton won the popular vote by two points. But in the state that contained the median electoral vote in the Electoral College plus one, Wisconsin, which is also known as the tipping point state, Donald Trump won it by one. That means that there was an Electoral College bias of three points. That essentially means that Trump could have lost the popular vote by up to three points and still won the election. So that's a hidden advantage for him, for sure, at least in 2016. A lot of people are obsessed with polls on a daily basis, and they see in the polls that Joe Biden is leading, and leading by a fair amount right now. But, but, show us how it could be that he would win the popular vote again and Donald Trump would emerge as the Electoral College winner. What would it take? Yeah, yeah. so, you know, take a look. This is a universe, the CBS News YouGov universe, and we're sticking within one pollster, and I think this will sort of tell the story. CBS News YouGov had a national poll last month that had Biden ahead by 10, and he was leading in the state that had the median electoral vote plus one Wisconsin by six points. But again, you see that same bias, right, where Trump is doing better in the state with the median electoral vote plus one than he is doing nationally. In fact, it's larger than it was in 2016. He's doing about four points better. And indeed, if you were to convert that to a number of votes, right, remember last time around, Trump lost the popular vote by nearly three million votes. This time around, given the math of the CBS News YouGov polling, as well as the expected increased turnout, Trump could lose the popular vote by over 5 million votes and still win in the Electoral College, John. And I think that's the number that blows a lot of people's minds, that someone could lose the popular vote by 5 million and still win in the Electoral College. Dive into that a little bit more, because, again, I, I think this is something that people will really care about. How can you get to, from 3 million to 5 million and still win a national election? Yeah, this is so important. So take a look at the polling, right, in the four most populated states in the union, right? California, New York, Texas, and Florida. And this, I think, tells the story, right? Joe Biden is so far ahead in New York and California, he's going to pile up votes there, get a lot of extra votes that, truthfully, he doesn't really need. While in the state of Florida and Texas, while Biden's ahead in Florida and he's uh, barely behind in Texas, those are much closer to the nationwide vote. So it's quite conceivable that Trump could win by small margins in Florida and Texas, the two big states he wins, while Biden wastes a lot of votes in New York and California. So essentially, you start getting 3 million, 4 million vote edges, while in fact in the Electoral College, it may still be quite tight. Yeah, the math is actually pretty easy. If you think about California and New York, it's easy to conceive of, of Joe Biden doing even better than Hillary Clinton in those states. And certainly in Texas, where Donald Trump won by nine points, you expect Joe Biden, if he closes the margin there, he may not win, in which case, again, it would build up that popular vote total. There's some other interesting facts about the Electoral College, Harry, which is that in battleground states, and depending on how you look at it, Candidates spend more than 90 percent and more than 90 percent of their time in a small number of battleground states because of the Electoral College. But those states are different demographically than the rest of the country. Yeah, so I think this is so important. So take a look at the breakdown of whites and whites without a college degree in the core six battleground states. Those are the six closest states that Trump won in 2016 that Joe Biden is very competitive in right now. Arizona, Florida, Michigan, North Carolina, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. And take a look. They're just so much whiter than the nation as a whole. 78 percent white versus 71 percent nationally. And non-college whites, Donald Trump's face, 50 percent white on average in those core six battleground states, just 40 percent mm. non-college white nationally. So Trump's strength, again, is expanded upon in this core six battleground states. Very quickly, Harry, where are we today in this electoral contest? Yeah, so, you know, it's still important to point out that even though Biden, you know, may not be as strongly ahead in the Electoral College as he is in the popular vote, he's still ahead in the Electoral College. If the current poll averages are the results at this point, Biden still has 353 electoral votes to Trump's 185, but we still have a little under 90 days to go, so we'll have to see what happens. Harriet, and I really appreciate you being with us this morning, diving into the numbers. I know you will be watching tomorrow night at 10 o'clock for this epic CNN event. I appreciate it, my friend. Thank you. I look forward to the musical number.